Hello, hello, folks. Welcome to the Public Podcast. I'm your host, J.D. Durkin, here with you today to discuss ChatGPT's capabilities in predicting financial markets. A very cool part of the story. Feel free, as always, to check us out over at Spotify at the Public Podcast and over at YouTube at Public Invest for more in-depth interviews and, of course, to help keep your portfolio on track. Today, we are here with University of Florida professors Alejandro Lopez Lira and Dr. Yuwa Tang to break down ChatGPT and its predictions on stock market movements. Dr. Tang and Alejandro, it's great to have both of you here. Thank you for joining thank us. You. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Of course. So Alejandro, I'd love to kick this first question off to you. In a recent study, you both analyzed ChatGPT's ability to predict stock price movements. Uh, how did you approach testing the AI's chatbot's abilities in this area? And, and walk us through a bit of the data that you would put in um, versus what, uh, what maybe was up to the imagination of the AI. Absolutely. Happy to explain. So we know that uh, ChatGPT's capabilities are mostly in the text domain. They're very good at understanding text. So we figure one good experiment would be uh, what happens if we fit it news headlines? Like we know that news move the markets. Uh, so can ChatGPT understand whether some news are going to be bad for some company or good for some company, right? And sometimes this requires like sophisticated financial understanding of the of the movement. So what we did is we collected uh, basically all of the headlines we could get for all the publicly traded companies from uh, October 2021 uh, to December 2022. We chose October because ChatGPT is trained up until September. So anything before that could have been memorized by uh, uh, the open AI algorithm. Whereas everything afterwards is, you know, not in the training set. So we fitted all these headlines one by one, and we say like, is this headline good or bad for the company mentioned in the headline uh, and the stock price of that company uh, in the short term, right? And uh, we asked ChatGPT to say like, yes, no, or I don't know, and to provide a one sentence explanation about uh, why is it giving the recommendation. Dr. Tanky, talk to me a bit about kind of the time-consuming nature of this, as well as how did you go about selecting which headlines to feed into the AI to better get its own predictive gauge? Well, that, that, that is interesting. We are indeed very careful in terms of selecting what text or what headline to feed in because we want to select the text that move the market, you know, and see whether, you know, um, ChatGPT has any potential to tease out those information, tease out their information that can move the market. So uh, what we do is we select the text that mention the company name, you know, say Google or Apple or Microsoft um, in the headline new, in, in the headline itself, and then make sure that it is relevant. Um, and then, you know, we, it, we use those as input and, and use ChatGPT to, uh, to, to get the sentiment. Uh, and Dr. Tang, I'll stay with you for the next one. I'm on the edge of my seat. How did it do? So, so I mean, the ChatGPT is just, just going to give you. I mean, we 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 select the headlines uh, from a database called Revenpack. So we have you know thousands of those headlines, and then we're going to each one by one, we're going to fit it to ChatGPT and get a response: yes, no, or neutral. And then we're going to recall those responses, and then we're going to relay those sentiment scores from ChatGPT to the next day's stock return. Uh, Alejandro, to clarify here, it, it sounds as if your primary methodology was headline space. So just to confirm, were you also inputting things like fundamentals, two hundred day moving averages, nothing, nothing, anything, anything else so that, that, that that's that's still yeah. On the so, so talk to me about talk to me about that decision because I think most. Uh, traders or designated market makers would obviously have their own world of data dependent points that they would input into an AI, but it seems like you went with a, a bit of a different direction. Yeah, so we know that ChatGPT's numerical capabilities are not uh, that extreme. Like, if you, it, you cannot use it as a calculator yet. If you try to multiply two large numbers, it's going to output something that resembles the answer, but if you check carefully, it's not going to be the answer. So it, it's not designed for that. So um, we are experimenting, however, what happens if you input some of these indicators and tell ChatGPT as part of it. Like, hey, you know, besides the headline, the 200-day uh, moving average was this number, and historically, when the 200 moving average crosses this threshold, this happens, right? If anything, so that's that's something on the work trying to augment its capabilities with pre-processed numerical data. Uh, but you know what we find so far is that even just with the using the news headlines, it's able to 
print it accurately, like uh, obviously better than Chance and even better than some of the proprietary software that sometimes it's sold uh, that analyzes sentiment. Uh, to me, it was perhaps not as surprising because if you look at the quality of the responses, and this is something that we have yet to put out in the in the paper, all of the answers are, are, are sensible and it's like something that I could answer, for example. So like, you know, we ask it like, okay, the, the news headlines is something about the, uh, for example, uh, Google is uh, facing hard macroeconomic challenges, but its uh, fundamentals are strong, right? Like as a human, you can understand that, but the, the usual algorithms get confused with the macroeconomic challenges, like, oh, maybe this is bad news, whereas ChatGPT tells you like, no, this is actually good for uh, the stock mm -hmm. price of Google in the short term, because you know, it shows that even during this bad economic environment, it's probably uh, going to do well. So the reasoning, and it's something that we're eager to put in the paper, it's uh, pretty interesting, and it's, it's, it's uh, surprisingly professional at its level. Alejandro, what does the timing of that paper look like? I wonder if you're able to uh, peel back the curtain as to how the process works a little bit and, and what you think your timeline is. Normally, academic papers uh, take a lot of time both to generate the idea and to uh, write. Uh, this paper, I think we pull in a week or something. So uh, the draft was written by April 6th, maybe April 5th or something, and then we release it to the public uh, by April 10th. Uh, and we've been iterating ever since. But normally, this takes these things take a lot of time. It's just we were so happy about the project and we were so, we thought a lot of people would be uh, happy about it and we've been receiving comments and incorporating new things. Uh, but for some reason, the paper, you know, it's still like an ongoing draft that we're almost modifying uh, day to day. Well, we wrote, and just to clarify, you're you're writing the paper or ChatGPT is writing the paper? Well, it, that's a trade secret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Tang, I, knew, I did, did not mean to cut you off. It seems like you wanted to pop so, up. So, so ChatGPT is the wonder here. I mean, it did help us, you know, increase the productivity. So, so um, obviously, being a hot topic, we intentionally want to put it put it up early, and then uh, more results are, you know, pending in in the, in the newer draft. I, and Dr. Tang, what, what are some of the limitations you think in terms of? financial predictions. I cannot yet imagine this is ready for widespread adoption or rollout across hedge funds and the desk of traders uh, across Wall Street. So, uh, you know, as Alejandro said, uh, this is just our like first experiment. You know, I think we only touched upon that one part of the potential and then there could be more, right? So just like you said, that uh, people can uh, look at, you know, uh, technical indicators and combine with that Textual information we get from ChatGPT, and then um, so so the, the, the potential could be uh, still huge. Uh, uh, before I want to mention about limitation, now um, one kind of limitation I think is um, for the for the currently for the trading strategy in the paper, we're talking about a daily turnover of, of pretty much a hundred percent, where you long in the positive and short in the negative sentiment, and then you in the next trading day we pretty much have to reshuffle the whole, um, you know, portfolio, I mean, transaction costs and liquidity constraints and limited arbitrage, those are uh, things will come to, uh, uh, um, come to, you know, uh, uh, play when you try to implement. But we also approached by hedge funds who have been using uh, not necessarily chat GPT, but um, sophisticated uh, uh, large uh, language models and, and in their trading mm -hmm. platform. Those are um, it's not like, you know, uh, people are not, so people have been using um, signals from textual information to, to, um, to implement trading strategies. And uh, if, if I may jump in with other limitations is that as, as everyone knows, uh, ChatGPT is not up to date with the latest development. So, you know, because of the cutoff date of uh, September 2021, it doesn't know what happened with COVID, how did it end? It doesn't know how the war in Ukraine is going. Right. So obviously you can imagine different types of news uh, have different impact in different macroeconomic environments. It, it has no context whatsoever of those macroeconomic environments. Uh, so that's something that uh, anyone trying to uh, right. trade on it uh, should be extremely mindful. And uh, the other thing is that most of the predictability is going to be concentrated in smaller stocks. Uh, normally, uh, and this is the case because institutional investors are not that interested in smaller stocks just because there's not that much money to be uh, mm. made. Um, I, there's a, there's been a little bit of a joke on Wall Street these last couple of months, especially with those who are frustrated with the actions of the central bank 
in the ongoing rate hike campaign that, oh, we should probably just have chat GPT try and figure out how to lower inflation. I, I wonder if there's anything in, in your models that you even experimented or played around with, not so much just for one individual company like Google and how it may or may not move the stock price of that company. But more broadly, did you also uh, approach it through the lens of big macro challenges, raising interest rates, helping fight inflation, any of those other components of the economy? We're definitely working on that. So we're, we're working in uh, how well does it do, do with the macroeconomic environment and we'll keep uh, everyone posted on, on those results. Uh, uh, honestly, it has a surprisingly uh, high level of understanding, but also there's a limit. Like I like to think it as an undergraduate level of understanding of the macroeconomics. So most of the answers will be very sensible, but there will also be no magical knowledge in there that it's not well known. So I I I, I would score an A, you know, for all of the answers, but I haven't really gotten any insight that uh, you know extra human could give. So the the part sure. that uh, I surprise yeah, is you know with ChatGPT you can feed a lot of textual information. They might have you know. Uh, uh, like Alejandro mentioned, you know, the level of understanding is, may not be as sophisticated as a, as a, as a, you know, financial analyst working in the industry for 20 years is more like an undergrad. But the good thing is ChatGPT is able to, you know, we can feed in, you know, if it is something related to a micro news or micro indicator, we can feed in a lot of information, a lot of text information is able to summarize. So, so we're still like, you know, very curious to see how ChatGPT does in terms of predicting, uh, let's say, aggregate market return and and all, all all microeconomic indicators. So you can argue either way, and then we think that it will be an open question, and and uh, you know, uh, you know, our future endeavors, um, you know, mm. we'll 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 eager to find out um, how ChatGPT does on on those uh, fronts. And just quickly about, for example, the limitations that it doesn't know what happened in September after September 2021, you can actually just put that as part of the of the query, right? Like if you think, for example, it's important that ChatGPT knows that uh, right now the Fed is worried about the banking crisis and it's probably going to stop uh, raising interest rates. You can put like, this is the current macroeconomic context and then ask the questions mm -hmm. and ChatGPT will also take that into account. So there's, right. there's ways... Uh, around the, the the full set of information. So, so related to, the limitations, right, sure. Related to that, let me add just one last thing. And so a lot of retail investors think that you can just ask ChatGPT which stock to buy. You know, and, and like Alejandro said, it was trained only up to September 2021. So that question if you ask ChatGPT is not gonna work because ChatGPT doesn't have the current the current information. So you need to feed ChatGPT with some you know, information with the you know, cutting edge, with the current situation, and then ChatGPT has more potential and you know, with with uh, some information feeded to the model. I wonder if either of you have been able to consider what AI's overall impact may be on financial jobs, jobs in the financial sector, jobs with big banks, hedge funds, traders, anything like that. Is there a future where more and more in a... Uh, more sophisticated iteration of what you both have done a great job testing. Is there a world where a lot of those jobs um, might be lost as a result of these emerging technologies? Um, sure, we all, we're always mindful of the implication. So you can think of ChatGPT as a big productivity booster, right? Like everyone's productivity just should have gone up a lot and that includes financial analysts. Now, whenever there's a huge increase in uh, productivity two things that are probably going to happen. One, like you're going to have like superstar analysts that are just using these new technologies and are going to be able to like, instead of processing two or three uh, reports, they're going to now be able to process like 20 or 200, right? Because it's so quick. Uh, so we think that it's definitely going to give rise to some winners. And on the, on the same side, like perhaps you will not need as many analysts as before to process the same amount of news, right? Uh, However, uh, we now live in a world where it's extremely cheap to generate information, right? Like now we can just, if you want to like just create a press announcement, it will take you like three seconds. Like I can just uh, ask a chat GPT to like write a press release based on this information in this company style and it will do it. So th the amount of information will also grow a lot and it's not obvious whether the supply of information uh, will actually give a rise to more analyst jobs. Uh, finally, any risks you think in further exploring AI capabilities within financials? 
Um, yeah, so <laughs> the good thing about uh, AI in finance is uh, not as dangerous in the sense that the more uh, the predictive cap capabilities of the model and the more the models are disseminated, the only thing that's going to happen is that market efficiency is going to increase, right? So in, if instead, like if before it was like profitable to trade in uh, news one day ahead, probably in the next six months is going to be in 30 minutes, right? And in the next year, it's going to be in like one minute and then like 30 seconds and then you're just competing in speed. So I do not uh, foresee that using this specific kind of technologies uh, would create a large impact with the cave cat that if everyone start doing the same type of trades, that could create a market volatility in some sense. Um, All right. Uh, finally, Dr. Tang, any, any closing words for you here before we wrap up the interview? Um, I just want to add that one risk potentially is that some company might use, you know, um, information to manipulate through the names of ChatGPT uh, to market. If anything, that market manipulation is, is something that um, we may have to put a, a keep an eye on in the financial market. But um, mm. overall, we think that um, is a, it is it still have a, a, a humongous kind of potential in the financial market. And uh, overall, in terms of productivity, it will have a, on average or in aggregate a positive impact on uh, on financial industry. You got to imagine there's more than a few things for regulators to be closely paying attention to uh, in the months and years ahead. And that goes uh, double for members of Congress as well. It's a fascinating conversation. I'm deeply appreciative to both of you for taking the time. Congratulations on the work and everything you've been able to explore and uncover so far. Professors Alejandro Lopez Lira and Yuan Tang, my thanks to both of you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you as well to those of you watching at home. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here on Public Live.